Yo, what's good, you beautiful people, music lovers out there? Welcome back to the Purple Underground. My name is Micah, a.k.a. C, capital M to the S in the flesh, a.k.a. the one. And I got with me my good friend, my big bro, my partner in crime, T. Ross. Yo, 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 what's up, people? Purple Underground, stand up. All day, every day. Yeah. So, today, people... We got a, a very interesting uh, album review and discussion. Uh, celebrating 20 years, uh, you know, just coming off this past weekend, we got a legend in the hip-hop community, rap game, you know, the big dog himself, big Snoop Dogg, you know, we're going to uh, discuss his third album, The Game. Is to be sold, not to be told. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Straight off the the tank, no limit records. Yeah, so uh you know, just a real quick backstory, this album was released August fourth. 1998 this was Snoop's third uh, album and his debut on uh, No Limit Records so um, uh, I mean for me man it's you know looking back on it I remember uh, you good You, you good you good yeah man you know what I'm saying I had to spray some Febreze in the air you know to you know, get my senses right because we're about to talk about oh, this okay. this record. And uh, okay, I'm ready. Okay, all right. So yeah, so looking back on this album, then 20 years ago, I, I remember very clearly when um, you know after the the Dog Father, you know his second album that came out in uh, 96, 1996. Death Row was like just beginning to like slowly on the decline. I mean, Tupac had got killed. Suge Knight just went to prison. Snoop was basically the. Uh, I mean, although he, he still had certain people on the label, but he was like the main star, you know. Right. And um, and then I heard there was. I remember hearing about issues that were going on with the label. Um, I guess, you know, as far as on the business side, and I just think Snoop wasn't happy. 97, I mean, Bad Boy was, you know, they, they was blowing up, no limit, no limit Records, Master P, and, you know, his empire was blowing up. So Snoop, you know, he wanted to be a free agent, and uh, they inked a deal with Master P at some point, and, uh, and, you know, he got on No Limit, and this album, you know, came out. And so, uh, I mean, to, to me, I was, I think a lot of people were, were in, anticipating it because I remember the dog father, I don't know how you felt about it, but, but I remember there was a lot of mixed opinions about it, you know, amongst, you know, a lot of my uh, peers about the album. You know, most people said it was pretty good. About what, the dog father? Yeah, but, but it didn't really live up to, I guess, the, the same hype as um, uh, Doggy Style. So when this one was out and then Snoop signed with P because No Limit was, they was on fire, uh, you know, you know, like at this time. So it, it was just going to be interesting to see how Snoop was going to fit, you know, with that whole No Limit roster. And he was already, I mean, a superstar in his own right. So, um, so yeah. I don't know. Um The Dog Father I thought was a, a very good album. Of course it wasn't better than Doggy Style. I mean, you know, like Right. You know, uh that that was one of the greatest debut albums of all time. Hip hop albums anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah. the, the, the Dog Father, for what it was worth, I thought it was a very good album. 
But right. then you get to this album, the game is to be sold, not to be told. Again, Snoop's first No Limit release. Mm-hmm. Produced by Beats by the Pound. You got... Uh, and also you got some uh, production by uh, Meech Wells, right, uh, right. who I believe is uh, the son of late the late singer Mary Wells. Right, right. So, I mean, I really don't know how to feel about this album. Mm. I, I really don't know because I think it's a lot of throwaways on this album. I really do. And like mm. now reminiscing and listening to it again. Mm. Um, back then, you thought you were getting more for your money because it had 21 tracks and No Limit was good for that. 21, right. 22 tracks or whatever on albums. Mm-hmm. But again, like I've stated in the other videos with these long albums. If, if you could cut that in half, you would have a stronger album. You right. know what I mean? Um, there are some songs on here I do like a whole lot. But right. the, the comparison for me between this album and uh, The Dogfather, I think The Dogfather wins easily. Mm. You know what I mean? Um you definitely hear Beats by the Pound trying to give some of Snoop stuff some of that West Coast flavor. Yeah. But I don't think it came off as well. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, there's some notable features. You know what I mean? You got Mia yeah. X, Steady Mobbing, um, Mystical, Mystical, Master Fiend, Fiend. You know what I mean? C-Murder. C-Murder. You know, uh, I don't think it's all bad, but... Right. Oh, uh, also got to mention the legendary Charlie Wilson. Right, right. On on a few tracks, too, yeah. Right. So, when I I listened to it the other day, I definitely have a better appreciation for it now. Mm. And there are a couple tracks that I have changed my mind about. You know what I mean, but okay, but uh, it was just okay. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, again, man, I mean, like for me, when I heard Snoop was signing with him, you know, first it was a rumor, and then it became official. They were signing, and then I remember when the in the uh, Source magazine when the the uh, the promo ads, and then you had, you know, the actual, they showed the actual album cover, you know, and then when it came out, it's just like, okay, so Snoop, he's going along with the the whole No Limit thing, you know, with the, you know, the whole, uh, what do you call it, the uh, 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 pen and uh, 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 pixel yeah. album covers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I so, mean, the album cover hot. Which, the album which, cover probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, probably it's, his. It's, hot, it's probably his hottest album cover to me. You know what I'm saying? Like that album cover is hot as hell. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's it's dope. I mean, what, and this is my original from 1998. It's a little uh, discolored, <laughs> you know, in his face, but you know it's got the like the chrome look. But um, I mean, for me, I, I've always thought this is a decent album. I, I can also see how the album got such a lukewarm reception, you know, from uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, the rap fans and everything. Um, I mean, it, it has its good moments, and like you said, there are a couple of throwaways. Um, I think the album starts off strong. Uh, the, the first track, Snoop World, like, I, I, I think that beat is just like lace like perfect with his flow and his vocals, and then um, and uh, and then you know some of those beats by the pound, you know beats, uh, Snoop's, I I just don't think his some of them is is they're not suited for his flow. Like 
you know, compared to like a fiend or a mystical or even a Mia X, you know, which I think Mia X can, she can probably rap on any type of beat, like to be honest with you. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. I kind of go back and forth between this one and the dog father. Cause I, I think the dog father was a good, was a good album. I wouldn't say it's a great album, but I don't, I don't, I wouldn't call it a flop either. You know what right. I'm saying? And I mean, and just like the dog father, this one actually sold fairly well. I think it, uh, I know it debuted at number one mm-hmm. first week on the billboard and, uh, sold about, uh, Two million, or a little bit over two million now. Mm. So it went um, double platinum, you know, right. later on that year. So yeah, it's it's it's. I don't know. It's you, you know, it's, it's it reminds me of. This is a good analogy. It's almost like you know, because Snoop's trying to get his feet wet again. It was almost like when Michael Jordan came back to the Bulls after retiring the first time. He mm-hmm. came back wearing the, the the number 45 jersey, and he was rusty. It was almost like that. It's like, yeah, you've seen flashes of greatness still, but but I think out of the three No Limit releases, I think this is probably the weakest out of the three. You know, but it's still, yeah. a, it's still a pretty good album. For what it is. Yeah, um, if we could get into favorite tracks, Okay. I mean, first, I want to get into some of the throwaways. A couple of, I, what I think are throwaways. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, pay for the P. Yeah, with uh, uh, Big, Big Pimpin. Pimpin. Yeah, de- yeah, definite throwaway. Um, Holes, Money, and Clout. I really didn't care for that song. Really didn't care for it. I, but, I believe uh, Superfly produced that beat. Back in the day, I used to like it a little bit more. Now it's sort of like, eh. Right. It's you know, kind but, of decent. Yeah, go but ahead. It, getting into the production of the album, I think the production of the album is solid. Like, it's some I great agree. music on there. But mm-hmm. I just don't think some of it at the time suited his voice. And then, like, a lot of it, back in the day, I didn't feel like it suited him. You know what I mean? But Right. But now, again, I listen to it again. And some of the tracks that I didn't like, they're actually okay. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, Like, for instance, like, My Fave Five, probably the first four tracks on the album, Snoop World, Slow Down. Wolf, Gin and Juice 2, and I actually, you know, like Steal a G thing. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, it, it's, See, it, no, go ahead, go ahead. it's not go ahead. all that bad, but yeah. other tracks I like, like True Tank Dogs with Mystical, I thought that was hot. Um, yeah, that's that's hard. Um, Game of Life, I like that track. Yeah, that's you know yeah. I mean? um, See you when I get there, like that track. But again, if if they could have just shortened the track listing, man, it would have been mm-hmm. more potent and more powerful, I think. Because again, some right. of the tracks on there are like total throwaways, you know. Yeah. Well, well, like you said earlier, I mean that was the thing back then, especially with a no limit release. You was gonna right. get. At least twenty, right, twenty, right, like cuts. But just, you know you what? Know, that was the shit, rip. though. You know what I'm saying? Thinking that you get yeah. some, you know what I'm saying? You paying fifteen ninety nine for a CD, you getting twenty one tracks. Hey, you getting your money worth? Exactly. You know what I mean? But it, it, it ain't about uh, quantity; it's about quality. The quality. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think mm-hmm. if it would have been twelve tracks, then hey, I thought yeah. I think it would have been better for me. No. No doubt. Now, I'm actually surprised that you picked Gin and Juice, uh, too. Yeah, I actually listened to it again, and shit wasn't that bad, man. It wasn't that bad. It, it, 
Yeah, I mean, you know? of course it's not like the original, but nah, nah, I, nah. I agree. It's not that bad. No. You know, but it's 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 almost like because, you know, with No Limit, you know, they down south, it's almost like doing the gin and juice more with that uh, that uh, southern flavor. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so you want me to give you, like, my five or, or, or the ones that I thought were some... Um, yeah, go some, uh, give me some throwaway. Tracks. Give me some throwaway. Okay, I definitely got to go with uh, pay for the P. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm gonna keep it clean for the video. Um, don't let go. That's a throwaway to me. I, yeah. I never was a big right. fan of that song, and still not. Um, the last track, "Get Bout It" and "Rowdy." It just, uh, like, it, like it's, it, it was like, okay, KLC did the track. You can hear, you know, it sounds almost like the, the ballad beat, but it just, it don't really go nowhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? For me. I mean, yeah, you, even Masterpiece Presence on there, you know, doing the ad libs, it just, just doesn't go anywhere. Um, what's another throwaway on here? Twenty dollars to my name. Uh, I'm not like it's okay, but right. You know, but now as far as like my five favorite, um, this is in no particular order. But I'll say this uh, uh, for me personally, I've always liked D.O.G.'s "Get Lonely" too, and I think mainly it's because it's got the, the John B. sample of uh, "They Don't Know." And uh, I always wonder now, listening to it, if that's John B. featured on the track. Mm. So I don't know if it is or not, but so that's one. Uh, Wolf featuring Mystical Machine. Uh, Snoop World featuring Master P. Right. Uh, I'm going to say Game of Life featuring Steady Mobbing. Yeah, that was hot. That was hot. Yeah. And I'm probably going to go with, um, see, I don't know, man. Like, I, I love that True Tank Dogs, but Slow Down was a, a good good song. Yeah. With him and me and X. Hot. And you know yeah, what? that was hot. The, the thing about Wolf, it was like they was going for that, uh, that make them say, uh, type shit. Yeah. And it didn't quite exactly. reach the mark. Cause I know it was right. a single, but it was yeah. like a low key single. You know right. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I had bought it as a single cause I think it had an extra track on it, but it was like, it was, don't get me wrong. It was a good song, good song, but right. it just didn't meet that mark of what make them say un did. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. Oh, you, real quick. I'll tell you another uh, favorite of mine. Ain't nothing personal featuring C Murder and Silk. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, I, I like that one too. Uh, although C Murder sounds very Tupac esque, but I thought he, he, I thought he sounded real good on that track. You know, like that. Right. And um, uh, shit, man, I was gonna say something else, but um, oh, uh, going back to what you was talking about, the singles. When I first heard "Still a G" thing, I didn't particularly care for that song back right. in the day. I didn't. I, I, either. I thought, yeah. I, I, at first, I, I just thought that was like a like a weak choice. But now, like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a song strictly for the low riders, and and, and it has got like a West Coast, you know, it, it it does have a West Coast flavor to it. Yes, it does. You know what yeah. I'm saying. Stri strictly for the low riders. For sure. So, so yeah. if if you were rating this album now in 2018, 20 years after its release, mm -hmm. what would you rate it? Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a light, very lukewarm three and a half. I'll give it a light three and a half, not a strong three and a half. I, I, I still think it's a decent album. 
Um, definitely above average. Um, but and you know, like I said, out of the, the three albums that he did for No Limit, uh, this would be my least favorite. Because the last two, he definitely hit the mark, uh, in my opinion. For sure. But, you know, we'll have to discuss those albums for a later video. So, yeah. Three and a half for me, man, out of five turntables. All right. Again, it was an okay release. Um... It was just an average album to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give it two and a half. Okay. I, I can respect it, that. It, it, it was just the average album. Again, if, if it could have been shorter and without them, mm -hmm. without them track, them other, all the other shit, then yeah. maybe I would have rated it higher. But I think out of Snoop Dogg's whole canon, this is my least favorite album. You know what I mean? I, I could definitely so, see this one uh, being, you know, pretty low you know, right. for me too. Right. So it's like, it, it, again, production was top notch. <clears throat> production was top notch. You know, but I, I think Snoop later on, like when he got other producers to work with on his album for No Limit, that's when right. you really saw Snoop shine. I don't. I don't right. really think he shined with like, yeah, beats by the pound. Yeah, they dope, but I don't think. I just don't think they mixed well, on a lot. Didn't mesh well with, right. with him. Right. Yeah. You know. See, not to not to go deep into, the the follow up to this one, the No Limit Top Dog, but I think, that album, was more cohesive, and better than this one because it's a mixture of. Some some beats by the pound, but it's mostly right. like West Coast, right? To yeah. Where it suits them, right? You know, so, so that's, yeah, definitely, that's what it is, definitely, man. for sure. So, so, so you give it a two point five, and I'm giving it a light, a light <laughs> three point five. Right so, on. So you know. So, yeah. So what y'all yeah, think about so, uh, Snoop Snoop Dogg's third release? The game is, the to, game be sold, is to be not sold, not told. Not to be told. Yes, twenty years already, already in the making. No. And uh, big shout out to uh, Big Daddy Cool One Eighty Seven on Instagram. You know he got his own uh, YouTube channel. Also, he's a big hip hop head, music geek. Like us, so I just want to give a big shout yes, out to sir. him because he's, uh, yes, you know, he's always uh, supporting us. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. And I sh and I shout out to all of our subscribers. Shout out to everybody on our Facebook group page. We love y'all. We love y'all. Indeed. Sure. So, so, you know, my name is P. Ross. You gonna give him the hashtag? No, so no. Okay, well, and my name is Micah, a.k.a. CMS, a.k.a. The One, and together we are the Purple Underground. Peace. Yeah. And we out. One love.